Hello student, I hope you're all doing fine and great and staying safe at home. So in this part of our lecture, I will go over Act 3 very briefly and quickly. And then I will go over also uh, the commentary part of this act. And then we'll go over as well Act 4 and then the commentary part as well uh, very briefly. So uh, there is no need to go over Act 5 because it's the resolution will be almost happened uh, let's say by the end of act four and you and i have already explained the end of the play to you um in the synopsis video if you do remember so let's come to this part act three so before i go to this part if you do remember in act two and act one uh, both of Marlow and Hastings mistaken Mr. and Mrs. Hardcastle's house for an inn and then uh, they came and arrived to their house to the house and they um, consider it to be an inn and this, this is, was part of uh, Tony's prank for let's say kind of like revenging Mr. Hardcastle for illustrating him so uh in this act and also i want to um to shed light on uh, kate if you do remember her agreement with her father in the morning she wears something very fashionable based on mr mrs hardcastle's fashionable let's say desire and then uh in the evening she usually wear very uh old uh, fashioned uh, uh dress like a barmaid okay so in this part we will see how kate changes her dress uh let's go through this part okay so um kate changes her dress and by this simple actions she prepares the audience for a further further mistaken identity so when kate changes her dress you know she dressed something to look like a barmaid and uh, Marlo didn't know that she was Kate herself so and also you do know that Marlo is very different or let's say his characteristics uh, is very different or de dealing with women from high class is different from dealing with women in, in, in the lower class okay so uh, here we have two important things which is Mr. Hardcastle and his daughter both of them compares Marlo's behavior with them so if you do remember that Mr. Hardcastle started to talk with uh, Marlo and Marlo kept in interrupting his speech and acting in a really weird way so Mr. Hardcastle um, completely has a different point of view about Marlo so he said that he's a loudmouth person and Bransley and um, Kate on the other side feels like feels uh, that Marlo is timidly bashful she thinks that he's a truly um very shy and um for this reason we have here two contradictions or let's say a dichotomy a dichotomy is two different point of views of the same person so we have marlo and we have kate's point of view and we have mr hardcastle's uh, uh mr hardcastle's point of view about marlo so uh we have here uh, Kate, so she made a condition with her father. So, if Hardcastle, her father, finds Marlo less impudent, and she finds him more presuming, let's say, more very, let's say, very shy, then they will review the situation and they will talk about uh, talk about this later. Okay, so the, she, kind of like she makes a deal with her father. Okay, let's uh, talk with Marlo and let me just see whether this is a truly his characteristics. Okay, so let's come here to Tony. Uh, do you remember Tony? Tony uh, promised Hastings and Constance Neville to run away, elopement, right? So Tony uh, decided to steal the jewels from his mother. So what he did, he took actually the jewels from uh, Mrs. Hardcastle, his mother, and then he gave them to Hastings. Okay. Uh, Constance, she started to beg her aunt, Mrs. Hardcastle. She wants her jewels. So what she did, Mr. Mrs. Hardcastle told her son, Tony, to tell Constance that they are lost. And they are actually lost because Tony stole them. And do you see, this is, this is kind of like ironic, uh, students. 
uh, because the jewels are already lost because Tani stole them. So um, she act as if she want to hand the jewels to Constance Neville. So she, uh, uh, where is the, let me just see. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Hardcastles went as if she went uh, to her house or to the disc of her house and uh, she wants to give the jewels to Constance as if she truly wants to give the jewels but she was pretending to do that she's not she was not ready to give the jewels because she wants the jewels to herself and um, she wants to Constance to get married to Tony, her son, so that she can get the jewels herself. And then the irony part here is when Mrs. Hardcastle went to her desk and she felt and she saw that the jewels are missing. So she before that, before doing that, she told her son Tony to tell Constance Neville that the jewels are missing. And uh, it is truly missing. So the, the, here's an irony part in here, okay? And the, the audience very rose in hilarity, which means they, they started to laugh because this is truly what happened. Um, the jewels are not there. So uh, we move to the one of the principal sections in the play. Um, Kate's attempts to discover the real person that hides behind the serious of Marlo, seriousness of Marlo. Okay, so now she wants truly to discover who is Marlo and his true characteristics. So we already know that Marlo mistakes her for the maid because she was, she was wearing a plain dress. Something looks like she's, she was a barmaid. Okay, and uh, and he also imagined her to be one of the lower classes, one of the people who are from the lower uh, class. So uh, Kate starts to talk with Marlowe and um, um, the the previous the previous conversation that they had. Uh, Kate uh, thinks that Marlowe was very timid, and very shy and bashful as i have already informed you in the in our previous videos uh right now it is something different um marlo started to talk uh in a really different way and he was talking about his gallantry which means his heroism of the ladies club in london where he lived there so he started to talk uh as if he he was very uh, feeling very free to talk in front of Kate because he thinks that she is from a lower class, okay? And then uh, Kate uh, started to talk because he thinks that she's a barmaid, so she revel she ref so she refers to the quilts um, in the bedrooms, to the blanket. Uh, she told him that I make your rooms very tidy and something like that. So he seizes her from her hand. And it tries to take her upstairs in order to examine truly her work. So, uh, if you uh, students, if you uh, realize here that uh, Marlowe's behavior with Kate, she's, since she's from a lower class, is different from as if she's from a higher class. Okay, so he's acting in a really different way. So what happened is that Hardcastle came and see that. Uh, he was very outraged. He was very angry because Marlo is behaving in a really horrible way with uh, Kate, like holding her her hand. And he was actually uh, surprised to see this behavior towards his daughter. And he remembered his daughter to spe daughter's uh, speech in which she said that his manner is very timid. Like, this is a contradiction. How can he be a very shy person and he's doing like that to you? Then uh, we see here Kate makes another condition with her father. She said that, uh, okay, uh, give me a brief time to demonstrate that Marlo, uh, either Marlo has the faults, the mistaking things that will pass with time, or the virtues that will improve with age. So her father agrees also to give her another time to, let's say, uh, examine or to judge her uh, point of view towards uh, Marlo. So we have here the commentary part. As I've already informed you, in Act 3 we see the dichotomy. Here is the dichotomy, which means the two different point of views of Hardcastles and Kate. 
so they they both so them they both um they have conflict conflicting views of Marlowe characters okay so this is the dichotomy like two conflicting views of Marlowe's uh character so um as I've already told you, she thinks that he timidly modest and open to much his feeling, and uh, her father is um, thinking that Marlo is acting in a really strange way. So this is student all happened because of the mistaking identity. Okay, so this is very important part in the play. Then. Um, uh, and is striking bargain so there is a deal with her father she makes a deal like okay just give me some time to discover more about uh, Marlowe's character so she leaves the audience to assume that she has a plan so what's her plan has a, her plan is very important because it's already we cannot consider it as a plan because she already uh, changed her clothes uh, habitually which means uh, as if it's a habit to change her address so she make use of this thing to uh under the title what we can call it this disguise uh disguise and deceit this is very important part in the play disguise and deceit two related practices that happened all over the play so um Kate may be said to be in some kind of a disguise because she is, as I've already informed you, that she wears a plain dress habitually in the evening. Um, it is enough together with her importunate a form of deceit to trick Marlowe into believing that she is a bar maid. So, uh, students, so this meeting that will happen next uh, will reveal how uh will re will reveal um or let's say will add dimensions on marlowe's behavior so we will know more about marlowe's behavior so disguise and deceit is not only in kate's uh let's say dress brother it's also in the characters let's see how mrs hard castle is uh turned out to be someone who's totally different from the first view from the first let's say opinion that was formed by the audience so uh to this point of the play uh, she was presented as a truly faithful woman especially at the beginning of the play and she was a good mother and then um especially after her you know mentioning that she's more uh, related to sociable life and different environment from let's say high class person so here Goldsmith uh, gave us an idea about Mrs. Hardcastle by the end of the play. The audience has to revise its opinions of the character. Why? Because she is a totally uh, turned out to be someone who's uh, dishonest. Okay, so she was dishonest. So, students, if I ask you to give kind of like. Um, uh, just give me the characteristics of Mrs. Hardcastle and how do you look at it? So at the beginning of the play, she was a very she she was um, the audience just formed this high, whole idea about her, as if she was a truly a good woman, a good mother, a very honest person. But by the end of the play, we realize she's not. So here, the audience revise their uh, idea of um, Mrs. Hardcastle. And the, why she's dishonest? Because she uh, wants her niece Jules, Mrs. Uh, Constance Neville's jewels, in order to give them to her son. Okay? So um, the audience warms him as he, um, as he writes this wrong and at the same time applies to Constance. Okay, so here is uh, Tony. Do you remember when Tony uh, offered his help to Hessings and uh, Constance Neville? They told him, I will provide you with the horses and I will bring you the uh, jewels as well so that you can loop and run away from the house. So let's see that in the next act, which is act four. 
So let's start with Act 4. So in Act 4, there is a letter came to Mr. Hardcastle and the letter from Marlowe's father. So Marlowe's father is will be like will be arriving shortly to uh, Mr. Hardcastle's house. So once Constance Neville heard of this, she said that um, Marlowe's father knew Hastings and Hastings and she must run away, loop with each another before uh, Marlowe's father arrives to M Mr. Hardcastle's house. So Lumpkin offered their help. Tony Lumpkin offered them their offer them help and um especially to get them you know fresh horses for the journey and then constance told uh lumpkin that she needs her jewels because she cannot travel without them so hastings already gave the jewels that tony gave him to marlo so as to guard the jewels in a box okay so um Constance and Hastings le left the stage and Marlowe enters alone with a box of jewels and he was very um, feeling very strange because he's not sure what's happening because Hastings gave him the jewels to guard so the, he believed that the best of place where he can put those jewels is uh, next to the landlady or the safekeeping and the, as he thinks that she's the landlady and the landlady is mrs hardcastle unfortunately so do you see students the, the the things that's happening here the mistaking identity the things that's happening among the characters he, here okay so um Hastings returns to Marlowe asking for the box. Where's the box? Just give me the box of jewels. Marlowe told him that I've already gave it to the landlady. And Hastings were very angry because the, the jewels came back to Mrs. Hartcastle herself. So he felt that, okay, uh, we will leave without the fortune. So this is his last, let's say, uh, decision. Okay, so then we have uh, Mr. Hardcastle who enters uh, complaining about his uh, drunk servants and he said that the servants are uh, have been getting very drunk and disorderly. So uh, do you see the mistaking and the identity leads to a humorous situation. Marlo protests that he told the servants to drink plenty in order to line the innkeeper's coffers and do you see the students uh it's uh, you know the mistaken identity so many stuff that's happening here so in order to cut it short uh let's come here to hard castle so hard castle he was very outraged he was very angry um especially with marlo and his um and his actions let's say so uh, marlo shouts for the bull you know, for staying in the inn. And then Hardcastle talked to him and complained. He said that Sir Charles, which is your father, just told me that I will meet a person of a breeding instead of person, instead of this person. Like, uh, Sir Charles, Marlowe's father, told Mr. Hardcastle that my son is a very educated person, he's very gentle, whatever. But Hardcastle is now confront, confronting, um, you know, Marlon and telling him that instead of just seeing a very gentle person, man, I met with a cogspomp and a bully. So uh, it, it, he met with someone who is very stupid or someone who is disrespectful. So at this point, this is what's happening here. This is the whole truth strikes, which means now the things started to be revealed to Marlo. By now, Marlo realized that he was mistaken, okay? He was mistaking the house. And now he's truly in Mr. Hardcastle's house. So, uh, where is the... Okay, let's go back and... 
Okay, so assures uh, that. Uh, okay, so Kate assures Marlowe that he's truly in Mr. Hardcastle's, and also she said confess confesses uh, that he mistook Kate for a barmaid. Okay, so then she pretends to weep at the notion that she has done anything to disoblige Marlowe, and um, he imagines that Kate and he himself himself are from a different social standing and Kate kept or let's say determines to pretend to continue to pretend that she's in a poor relation then Kate started to tell her father about the deception that you know happened to uh, Marlo okay so at this point we have uh, Tony who arrived you know with the fresh horses so as to help uh, Constance Neville and has things to run away. Let's come. So, uh, students, so the, um, let's come over here and see. Okay, so uh, we have uh, Tony who is planning to help. Uh, Tony is planning to help Constance Neville and has things to run away. So. Uh, he was speaking with his mother and his mother was uh, assured to him that okay i will get you married to constance neville and then we'll get her jewels so during the conversation the conversation was inter interrupted by the entrance of diggory so diggory was the servant okay and he was the one who's gonna help tanya as well to uh, to uh help hastings and Constance Neville to run away. So Diggory was holding a letter with his hand, and since the boy, he means since Tony cannot, you know, is barely literate, which means he cannot read because he's not educated. Okay, he's not a schoolboy. So he had a difficulty in understanding the letter. So what he did, he uh, gave uh, Constance Neville the letter. And then Constance truly recognizes that this letter is coming from Hastings and she pretends to read a message about a cockfight. And um, Lumpkin, after that, snatches the letter from her and asks his mother to read it to him. So do you see this? So in this letter, Hastings delivered a letter to Degari to give it to Tani. So since Tony cannot read very much, he gave it to Constance Neville. And then Constance Neville tried to read the letter and she tried to pretend that was a letter about a cockfight. And then uh, and after that, Tony took the letter from him from her and gave it to uh, Mrs. Hardcastle. And you know, uh, Mrs. Hardcastle knew that they are gonna run away. So Hastings is waiting at the end of the garden so this is what was written in the letter okay uh the post coach is ready but a fresh horse is at needed a speech a speed is needed or mrs hardcastle's referred to is as the hag okay will suspect a plot uh mrs hardcastle right now realized that constance neville is gonna run away so what she did she determines to take the horses and change the whole uh change their whole travel to her aunt's pedigree if you would remember in the synopsis part okay because she wants to ensure that the girl constance neville is secure because she wants her to marry tani so what happened is Constance uh, Neville rounds on Lumpkin, okay? So she was very mad with Lumpkin and especially his stupidity, okay? So Hastings enters and accuses Lumpkin for betraying them because he said, I trusted you to take us, you know, so that we can run away, but you betrayed me. At the same time, Marlowe also realized that Lumpkin, who was the one who... Uh, prank them at the beginning of the play and he direct them to uh, Mr. Hardcastle's house and told them that was an end. So do you see student here? There was a huge accusations. Okay, so accusations fly and mount up. Okay. 
and also we have here Marlo who also uh, talked with uh, Hastings and blamed him for not telling him the truth about the whole deception. So Constance uh, left with Mrs. Hardcastles as if she's truly going to her aunt's house and during this time Tony was thinking of something to uh, let's say the save the situation. Okay, so we have here in the commentary, uh, in this act, which is act for a lot of people, or let's say a lot of characters become very aware of this deceptions being practiced on them. So Marlo, in this act, learns that the house he has been staying in is an inn. This is one thing. And then um, Mrs. Hardcastle realizes that Hastings is about to loop with Constance and that, you know... Do you see a lot of uh, deceptions revealed by now? Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, the, a minor complication uh, occurs too. So, do you see the, the whole complications that happening from the beginning of the play? The complications of the plot begin to be unraveled. So, everything is now become to be clear by the end of the play still there is kate who uh didn't reveal truly her true identity but she changed her role from being a barmaid into a poor relation which is uh something different a little bit so uh everyone started to realize that marlo discovered the truth and later on he will come to discover kate's real nature and station Okay, so uh, in the previous acts, instances of irony abound. So there is an irony in this. So there is a lot of irony in this act, students. So there is Marlowe's innocent action of passing the jewels to Mrs. Hardcastle. And we have uh, Kate's talk with uh, Marlowe about the rank and about the society. And he consider her considers her to be a barmaid so all of these you know deceptions revealed by the end of the play so kind of like as if goldsmith here is uh gradually telling the audience okay so this is almost the end of the play okay so uh if you do remember in the synopsis part Tony's plan is uh, they're gonna go over in a, in a circular place and around the place and then they they refers to Constance Neville and Mrs. Hardcastle because they they were supposed to travel, but they are actually not traveling. They are um, moving in a circular way, and they will go back to the same place, which is Mr. Hardcastle's garden. Okay, and then by the end of the play, there is a happy ending, which is the comedy part. So uh, if you know, if you want to know the end of the play, students, I've already informed you about it at the synopsis part okay so this is what we have for to for today in our lecture i will go over a couple of themes that that are important uh, in the next uh video so thank you for listening